Welcome back to this, our second video in the series talking about Blackboard groups. Now, in our last video, we talked about some of the differences when we're discussing Blackboard groups, and we know that there are essentially two different buckets. We have facilitator groups, which are used to distribute grading for students among multiple facilitators when you have a lot of students in your course. And this helps to eliminate the overwhelming sensation of grading a large number of students by yourself. Now in the other bucket we have collaborative groups and that's the traditional sense of groups and it's in this bucket that we see students put together to work on projects and assignments as a team. Now in this video we're going to be discussing how to manage facilitator groups. That way you can best utilize them to distribute grading of your students among multiple facilitators in your course. While in the next video we'll discuss how to manage collaborative groups. And then in the final video, we're going to talk about some of the blurred lines when it comes to using groups in your course and how these two buckets can oftentimes intersect. All right, let's talk about it. Now, right off the bat, I'd like to point out that setting up groups is a relatively complex process. But as an instructor in the College of Allied Health Sciences, you can request the creation of these groups through the CETIS Design Office. And that said, in this video, let's focus on just the management and use of facilitator groups rather than their creation. As we discussed earlier, the idea and practice behind this type of group is primarily for sectioning out your students into groups that are then managed by multiple facilitators in your course. But as the course instructor or course director, you're the one that's developed the assignments and ultimately has the responsibility of making sure that your facilitators understand your expectations so grading can be consistent across all the students in the course. Your facilitators will each have their own group of students that they are responsible for, and as will you. So each student will then funnel up to the facilitator that manages their group for all questions, grading their assignments, and overall support of the class. So really what changes a bit for you as the course director is that you take more of a coordination role in this type of course. So with that said, let's take a look at my computer. Welcome to my Blackboard demo course. Now let's pretend that I have several students enrolled and I need to share grading duties with my facilitators. So let's start by talking about groups and the group tools. Groups can be found by going to the Users and Groups section under your Course Management heading in the Navigation panel, and then clicking on Groups. Here you can see all the groups, and by clicking on the name, you can see which students are enrolled in that said group. The group names are created by the CETIS Design Team and named after the facilitators in your course who will be responsible for grading and interacting with the students in their respective group. Now, here in my course, we can see both groups, but that's because I'm the Course Director. Students can only see the groups that they are a part of, and by clicking on their group name, they'll be taken to the group landing page, where they can interact with others in their group based on the tools that they have available. Now, for this example, we only have the discussion board tool turned on, but when you're requesting course build, we can set up whatever tools that you'd like, and we'll talk about that in much more detail in our last video of the series. Now, I'm going to add a level of complexity. In the past, we used to refer to facilitator groups as discussion board groups, and you may have even seen that in our course build questionnaire form. Well, that term is a little confusing. In all honesty, a better term is facilitator groups because these groups are designed for distributing grading and interaction of your students among multiple facilitators in the course. So in other words, it's like these groups are acting as different sections. Okay, I hear you. I've blown your mind a little bit. Well, let's take a look at how your co-facilitators grade using these groups, and maybe that'll add some clarity to the big picture. So by clicking on the Grade Center heading in my navigation menu, you should see some subheadings, and those are named after each of the facilitators of the course. These are called Smart Views, and by clicking on the group name, I'll be shown the students in my group, and I can tell that these are my students because all of the other rows are missing. In this demonstration course, I have a total of 10 students. But because I only have four students assigned to me in my group, all the other rows are filtered out. This way, I can only interact with the students in the Grade Center columns that I am responsible for grading. So as you can see here, I have some discussion board posts and a couple other assignments. So even if I didn't have discussion board forms in this particular course, these types of groups are still a nice way to divvy out all the grading duties. All right, I know that was a lot, but here's the good news. If you know that you're going to be needing facilitator groups in your course, you can always reach out to us and we'd be happy to help out not only create them for you, but assist in whatever questions you may have about using them. All right, so that's all for this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about this mystery of Blackboard groups, or almost mystery. 
So until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us today. Click on the left to watch the next video in this series, or click on the right to watch another video from our channel. And don't forget to click the center channel icon to subscribe. Thanks for watching.